Before we proceed to the video, for more LEAD AP O plus M study material, you can contact me on my email and on my LinkedIn as usual. Hello and welcome to Water Efficiency Credit Category for 12 points. Uh, this is what we will be discussing in this video. We have this chart having uh, two prerequisites and four credits. And we have subsequent credit for the prerequisites, indoor water use reduction prerequisite and credit, building level water metering prerequisite and water metering credit. And I have put them together one after another in my video because it makes uh, more, better, better flow and makes more sense. Uh, one thing to uh, specify here is that this water is about outdoor, but uh, it's about the potable water that you are using outdoors. Uh, the rainwater management, which is not potable water, is discussed in sustainable sites. Uh, so we will be discussing the outdoor water, but not uh, from uh, rain, but the one that we are using from potable water sources. And we know that potable water source is something that uh, is approved by EPA for drinking. So let's move on to the first prerequisite. Prerequisite number one is indoor water use reduction, which is the intent. And we've got multiple options. The first one is the calculated water use, which is to reduce water consumption of indoor plumbing fixtures. Now we have three conditions. Since uh, it's an existing building, it could be uh, tens of years old or relatively new. So they have uh, three conditions. The first one is the certificate of occupancy was given after 1995 or before 1995. Or, or if the building was renovated after 1995. So what's the purpose of making all this? Back then, uh, when the buildings were uh, constructed, the codes or the use of water was not that stringent. So they are giving a flexibility that if, you, if the building was occupied after 1995, you have 20% more uh, flexibility. And if it was before 1995, you have 50% more flexibility from what we'll see it in the next slide, but uh, generally from the green associate uh, course, we know that it is uh, the regular 1.6 uh, gallons per flush for WCA and one gallon per flush for urinal and 2.2 gallons per minute for the laboratory. So these are the baselines. We will have it in the next slide as well. So they're giving you a flexibility of 20% after 1995 before 1995, 50%. And if any building was renovated after 1995, only the portion that is renovated has to follow the 120 baseline. And the one that is not renovated will be following the 150% baseline. So baseline for subsequent fixtures should be 120, only the one that are renovated. This is the baseline, 1.6 GPF for a toilet, one for urinal, Public laboratory 0.5, private 2.2, kitchen 2.2, and shower head is 2.5. So you have to add 20% and 50% based on the certificate of occupancy of your building. So the above table is the flow rate of your sanitary fixtures. Now, how much these are used? So you have to know how many people and they're using it for how long. So we have a different fixture type and we have different users type. We have FTEs, full-time equivalents. Uh, usually uh, the simplest definition is people who are spending more than eight hours a day uh, in uh, the same facility or in the same buildings are FTEs. Retail customers uh, are a certain percentage of FTEs. Visitors also certain percentage. Students are uh, equal to FTEs. So this is how you calculate based on the number of closets, how many people you have, and how, or what is the time uh, frame that they use the fixture for. And uh, we have similar sort of concept, but it is in the residential uh, units. So the above one is for the commercial units and the below one is for the residential units. So this is how you calculate your design and then you have to calculate your actual usage of fixtures. And these are the formulas by which we will be uh, taking out the baseline, the baseline multiplier percentage based on uh, the certificate of occupancy or if there is any renovation, 150 and 120. Then you have daily water use for each fixture type, uh, which is equal to fixture flush or flow rate times duration of use, time uses, and time uses per person per day. We have seen it in the previous table. So the once the this is how to establish a baseline. So once the baseline is established, compare it to the install case, whatever you have on site, inside the building, then you will calculate the duration of use, users, 
and uses per day and both should be consistent the number of people in design case should be equal to the number of people in your actual install case since this prerequisite deals with uh, the fixtures and appliances so you just need to submit the cut sheets for them uh, or data sheets and uh, the subsequent calculations for uh, the standard or default value of fixtures and we know that the design and uh, the calculated uh, data should be consistent and since we know that this could be uh, an old building and the fixtures and appliances were purchased and installed tens of years ago but in case you have to buy anything new there should be a policy uh, to buy water efficient or water sense or equivalent fixtures this was option number two, one we have option number two which is meter water use in this case you have an establishment period you have to establish a baseline from which you will show improvement and this uh, baseline has to be established by recording one year of uh, water data you have to uh, it can be done by uh, looking at the water meters that how much water is being used and uh, the condition is that at least 80% of fixtures are to be metered so you have 80% of fixtures metered plus one year of data record this will establish a baseline then after this baseline you will apply some retrofits you might install uh, make some repairs some some leaks uh, so after then you, you will start the performance period and in the performance period you will show uh, with the help of uh, your uh, bills or whatever was your criteria of uh, establishing a baseline. So similar criteria will be followed here and an improvement will be showed based on uh, will be shown based on this formula baseline volume minus performance by baseline. So the documentation is the complete record of one year baseline and the improvements based on this formula and the retrofits and repairs that are done. Credit number one is indoor water use reduction, one to five points for all ad adaptations except for uh, data center, which is uh, one to four points, and the extra point will be recuperated in another credit. The purpose is uh, same to reduce water, indoor water consumption further from prerequisite number one. So uh, the option number one calculated water use is to have uh, more efficient plumbing fixtures, and uh, it should show an improvement from 10 to 30 percent further from the baseline in prerequisite number one. Uh, one important thing that is to be noted here is that for the prerequisite, uh, the only thing that need to be considered is the fixtures that are under the control of the building management. But in case to earn, in case you have to earn the credit, it applies to the fixtures of both core and tenant fixtures. So if you have somebody or some uh, office space or a tenant or somebody who has taken it on the lease, it applies on both the areas built uh, in uh, under the management of the building and the one who has rented or leased or uh, using the office space so this is the main difference between the two and then you have a, uh, a minimum of 10 percent to uh, start earning the points and if there are any upgrades that are need to be done uh, we know that the building management is uh, it's easier for for them to start with the core fixer first it would be really hard to push uh, the tenants or uh, the office renter or someone who is leasing to change their fixtures. So this is the table based on which uh, the points will be earned from starting with 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and you will gain respective one, two, three, four, and five points. But in case of data center, it's only four. Uh, documentation, since it's only dealing with the appliances and fixtures, so data sheets of fixtures and appliances. And in case, uh, in, in this uh, credit, you have uh, a facility that you can offset the water in uh, indoor water use by using an alternative water source. But if you're using any alternative water source, you have to submit it in the documentation. What is the source and how it is offsetting or, or how much it is offsetting the indoor water use. The last uh, option was dealing with the prerequisite option number one. And this option number two is uh, furthermore uh, towards the option number two of prerequisites the continuation of the option number two of the prerequisite so here we have the baseline and uh, which was established uh, in one year recording period and we have to show percentage percentage reduction from that baseline 
uh, at least 80% of the fixtures and fittings are to be uh, metered. And uh, the, this credit also emphasizes that it covers both core uh, and tenant fixtures. So uh, any guy on lease or rented has to be uh, also calculated in this fixture use. Less than 5% is going to earn uh, one point and 5%, 10, 15, 20 is going to give two, three, four and five uh, points respectively. And uh, in this case, the documentation is the meter data. We have uh, the calculated baseline and then uh, how much uh, is your reduction that will be calculated in the performance period by the help of uh, the bills or whatever is the criteria of uh, measuring the water use. And if there are any alternative water, uh, it has to be submitted that how much uh, you have used as an alternative source. The exemplary performance of one point can be earned in option number one if there is more than 35% reduction, more than equal to 35%, and more than equal to 25% from option number two. Uh, the general idea is that it is easier to uh, deal with the fixtures and appliances, and it's really hard to first establish the data, uh, data in one year period and then to show the baseline, uh, to show the improvement from this baseline. That's the reason that is 25% is going to give you an extra point and only 20% is going to give you five points. Prerequisite number two is building level water metering and the intent requirement is to install water meters in the building that calculates or measures the water use in the building, the portable water use in the building, inclusive of any makeup water meter if it is there, makeup water for the cooling tower if it applies on your building or on your project. Now, on-site well and on-site portable water treatment is also included and it should also have a, uh, a water metering. And the meter should have uh, some uh, requirements or some features that it should be permanent and the data should be uh, compiled into monthly and annual summaries. You receive a monthly bill so you can compile the annual summary which also may be used in the prerequisite number one option number two where you can is, uh, make uh, a summary for the water use in the establishment uh, period. Uh, it's based on where you live something similar uh, would be seen on uh, outside of your project as water meters and the water bill now mostly uh, it has gone paperless but uh, this is what you receive as a bill. The documentation is uh, to submit a meter declaration and proof of shared commitment. By the way, you have to share uh, the data use or the water use data with USGBC for five years. So there's a commitment you can make on USGBC approved data template or via a third party data source and share the consumption data. So this is the basic uh, building level water metering. One meter is usually there and uh, it should capture all on-site uh, treatment, if there is on-site well, if there is any makeup water meter, the summaries should be available and uh, commitment with USCBC for five years. Credit number two is water metering, an extension to the previous prerequisite to identify additional opportunities to save some water. The requirement is to have additional sub water meters or water sub meters uh, for systems, including irrigation, indoor fixtures and fittings, district hot water, uh, different than the building level water metering where you had one water meter but in this case it's split into different subsystems subsystems and uh, the difference between the subsystems is that for irrigation indoor fixtures other process water district hot water um, if 80 percent is metered or 80 percent of these systems are submetered it is acceptable however for cooling towers and reclaimed water 100 percent of that water should be submetered now, uh, if you subsystem or put meters on two subsystems, you'll gain one point. And if you put meters on four subsystems, uh, you will gain two points. The meters should be calibrated as per the manufacturer recommendations, and it should be able to record on weekly basis, unlike the previous uh, prerequisite where you needed only monthly and annual summaries. So this one requires weekly summary. Uh, you know, as per the pictures below, now there are smart meters you can uh, see the real-time information through the app and uh, they are able to record even on uh, not even weekly but hourly basis so they are advanced than the one required in the prerequisite so for the documentation provide water metering strategy narrative for the uh, for the submission and weekly meter log summaries of meter data uh, 
You can submit the other summaries, but weekly summary will show that the meter is able to record the uh, readings on weekly basis. Credit number three is outdoor water use reduction for one to two points maximum, and the intent is to reduce water use. However, athletic fields, food gardens may or not be may or may not be included as per the project team discretion. Non-vegetated areas should be excluded from all the calculations. Uh, we have uh, similar to lead green associate the option number one is if you are able to show that no irrigation is required for your landscape you will earn two points uh, and how the water requirement is fulfilled it is mainly by rainfall you have to submit that uh, the rainfall is sufficient for the types of plant that you have planted to grow and it does not need any permanent irrigation system and what are, what are the strategies uh, the zeriscaping we know that the water that use less uh, amount of water than the regular plants and if you use native plants uh, projects with no landscape earns the credit automatically sometimes if it is a zero lot line you do not have any landscape you can submit that no irrigation is required for your project so the documentation is the site plan showing vegetated areas in case of uh, no landscape you can submit the uh, site plan showing there is no landscape and a narrative for plant species water demand uh, which any hydrologist or uh, the person uh, expert in this uh, plant science can uh, provide with, uh, provide you with that local rainfall from uh, uh, the concerned departments they will uh, give you the number uh, that how much rainfall is recorded in the previous 10 years in the certain area of your project and the evapotranspiration rates data that is going to show that uh, the rainfall is sufficient for your uh, project which in which you have uh, apply the zeriscaping. Option number two is for the projects where no irrigation meter is installed. We know from the credit water metering that you can have sub systems uh, water metered, but in case if your project is only fulfilling the prerequisite where you have one meter for water supply, then in that case for outdoor water use reduction, you can go for this option in which you will show uh, the reduction from a baseline standard. Now, where is this baseline standard coming from? It is coming from a, a water sense water budget tool that is being calculated online. I'll show you the pictures, how it looks like in the next slide. And uh, you have to input uh, the total area vegetated, what kinds of what kind of plants you are having, what's the location of your project. Uh, and by the location, it can uh, calculate that how much is the rainfall in that certain area. And based on all this information, that is going to give you the annual or monthly water requirement of your project and then you have to apply certain strategies in order to reduce uh, the amount of water water that might be required in that case that is smart sense tech irrigation automatically it's going to give you 15 percent improvement if you're using any non-potable water it requires narrative and calculation of supply non-potable water means if you're harvesting any rainwater or if you are using any other supply like HVAC condensate, or if you are getting any other source uh, from gray water and then retreating it. Uh, plant native species is going to reduce the amount of water, water that you might be using and uh, to reserve the turf only to the play areas. 30% uh, from the baseline is going to earn one point and 40, more than 40% or 40% is going to uh, earn the project two points uh, documentation is simple site plan showing the vegetated areas and if there is any alternative water supply calculations these are to be shown in the water budget tool report and or you can go for any other options but before going to the to these options uh, let's have a look at uh, this water sense water budget tool so this is how it looks like online you put all your requirements uh, by uh, actually what is required by the water sense budget tool and it's going to give you uh, the numbers that this much uh, is required in uh, your project this much water is required and uh, the alternative water sources as i said you can use an alternative uh, water source as a rainwater harvesting in this case the rainwater is being collected from the roof of uh, the house is being filtered then put it inside the tank and from the pump it can be used for toilet flushing car washing clothes washing or garden watering so it is offsetting the amount of water uh, amount of potable water and if there is any extra then it can go the overflow can go to the groundwater 
or the well. In smart tech irrigation, we have seen in the water metering as well that there are smart meters now. So similarly, we have uh, smart irrigation. You can tap it to any mobile app and it can give you real time uh, information. Now, how much you can collect as a rainwater? We said that it is the requirement that the calculation of water supply. So gallons per one inch of rain as per the local rainfall data and the roof area in feet square times 0.6 means 60% uh, of the water that falls on the roof can be calculated as per this formula can be saved and put it inside the main tank. Uh, it, it will be acceptable. The 60% of water is available to save and the amount available is gallons per one inch of rain times average inches rain per month. All this information you can get from uh, the local rainfall data. So for the option number three is when you have irrigation meter sub sub meter installed. In that case, your baseline standard would be taking average of three consecutive years from the past five years. So you do not have a water sense water budget tool. In that case, your baseline would be the actual water use for irrigation in the past uh, three consecutive years or any three consecutive years within the past five years using the same techniques like smart sense tech irrigation non-potable water plant native species or reserving the turf to play areas you will apply all these strategies and you're able to show the reduction uh, from your baseline and the new uh, performance of your uh, techniques or uh, the smart sense tech irrigation if you have uh, applied you will calculate the difference over the course of one year performance period. So you have three years in this credit, your building should be almost uh, three years old minimum. And for the calculations of uh, the submission of performance period, it should be one year. So uh, this is very important when it comes to the performance period, as we know that all, all of them should be uh, ending within 30 days period. So in this case, you have to start early and it has to end with the uh, within 30 days to the other credits that you are uh, submitting for gpci so if you are able to show 30 percent reduction you'll gain one point 40 percent for two points now the documentation would be alternative water supply calculations if any irrigation meter report for the past three years the one you are submitting as a baseline and for the one year performance period so the last credit for this credit category is cooling tower water use for two to three points to conserve potable water used for cooling tower makeup without negatively impacting the water system used by the condenser now the requirement is similar to bd plus c or the green associate as it says uh, conduct one-time potable water analysis that is used in the cooling tower for makeup and it should contain almost uh, five controlling parameters that are to be tested and based on these cooling parameters it will give you almost how many cycles this water can be used without exist uh, without exceeding those parameters in the figure below you can see this is how a uh, cooling tower looks like on the right i'm sure you have seen it and this is the technical diagram on the left where you have the entry of hot water it is being thrown from the height and it is being collected down and the cold water is used then inside the building but in the process you see that uh, water is being uh, evaporated outside and then makeup water is used to cover up that particular water these are the maximum concentrations for parameters that we set five parameters calcium as in calcium carbonate total alkalinity uh, silicon dioxide chloride and the conductivity and the maximum levels are shown uh, in front of each uh, parameter a uh, number of times that a volume of water can circulate throughout the cooling tower system before uh, it uh, the minerals that are used uh, become so concentrated that it starts hurting the system in that case uh, when in, when this uh, situation comes then we have to uh, change the water so we will see uh, how many we can how many cycles the more cycles we can uh, do without changing the water that's how we are uh, reducing the water use so maximum cycles without exceeding the threshold levels if you are able to show uh, that you are uh, using the same water up to 10 cycles you can gain two points and if you're using any recycle up to 20 percent of non-potable water it can earn three points but in case of data centers four points we know that data center earned one less point in indoor water use reduction that is being recuperated here 
The alternative best source would be water condensate because it needs least treatment, then the harvested rainwater, gray water, one up from ground. They might need some treatment, but they can be used as makeup water. So for the documentation, uh, one-time potable water analysis, this is the first thing that we should submit, and the calculations for cycle based on that analysis. And if there is any non-potable water used, then the calculation analysis for that water treatment should be submit, submitted. Uh, by this, we come to the end of uh, water efficiency, and we'll continue on with the energy and atmosphere credit. Thank you for your attention.